but you know we must change the narrative sisi kazi yetu tu hapo awali ilikuwa ni kuharibu jina ya baba na kupiga ye na kumharibia jina na kumwita ile majina yote ambayo stay crude di hata rais mwenyewe alisema <laughs> ile majina so the time has come because we must be honest with ourselves to end the true di machinani tuambie wananchi hii ilikuwa ni siasa hii ilikuwa ni siasa ya ushindi Ta, lakini tuka overdo some things tukaharibu jina yake hapa na pale so we need now to inform our people yes hii ilikuwa ni siasa this is what uh, Laila Odinga you know complices when we went to Karatina nikubusha wananchi wa Karatina when we prepared the cabinet paper when on uh, Karatina University mwenye alikuwa anatengeneza hiyo paper akiwa chama ni committee committee za cabinet na mheshimu Ongeri yuko hapa ambao tulikuwa nao katika cabinet ilikuwa ni mheshimu Laila Odinga na watu wakanyamaza because all people think that Laila cannot mheshimu Laila cannot be able to 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 engage and to support communities in this country the way propaganda has been so we must change that propaganda kila mtu akirudi tuadhari ni tuanze safari mpya na na spirit mpya eh uh, ile 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 verse inasema create a clean heart in me o lord and put a new and lightful spirit within me wakati tumefika sasa tuanze kuambiana ukweli tuambie watu wetu ukweli tuanze kusameana tuanze kutengeneza taifa mpya ambalo litaweza kuendelea mbele ili sisi kama eh, na matumiuliza mheshimiwa Raila aje katika mlima yes ameanza kupanda sisi tulienda jana hata tukalala huko tuone kama ataona mamba huko na kaona hakuna mamba hakuna mamba ambayo iko katika mlima kulea <laughs> mlima Kenya hapo ni kana ni nchi ya maziwa na asali na viazi na kahawa na ti sisi tungependa mheshimiwa Raila wakati eh, ma, wakati utafika najua utakuja kuongea hapa na tumeona manifesto yako the draft ambayo ulituongea jana wakati ulipea na statement mambo ya value chain vitu zetu ambao tunakuza kukosa market kukosa industries ni potato zetu zinatoka tunatoa potato South Africa na Egypt yet farmers in Nyandarua county au Kiambu na can grow the can grow those potatoes that are eaten why should we import potatoes of all the things why can't we revive the industries in the mount Kenya ajua hiyo agenda ni kitu ambacho tumeongea kwa hivyo stay crudia ili pia magavana wengine the numbering environment about uh, mheshimiwa Masharia ameongea kumekuwa na shida kubwa uh, wakati mwingine i thought mheshimiwa Masharia ongeongea vile mashini zako zilipigwa wakati mmoja eh, wakati ulikuwa unaanzisha hivi system yako wakati huo nakumbuka hizo mashini zako tabu ambayo ulikuwa naye na we would like a leader who comes and creates sisi ni watu wa kufanya biashara na tungependa policies ambazo ni friendly yes you have talked very well accountability for taxes in fact mheshimiwa kibaki when he came in alishika tax nchi yetu na kuona kwamba wizi umeisha this country is very prosperous this country don't need to get Uh, money from abroad that tax itself alone inatosha at least kuendesha inchi na vile alitoa hata international capital katika budget yetu so if we manage this country well and that's what we are looking for a leader who comes and manages this country well na tuweze kuendelea mbele i think we shall have been able to to see what we saw you moving the economy from minus 7% to 7.3% in 207 within just about four years to begin uh, prime minister makofi na rais mzee kibaki na rais uhuru kenyatta akiwa treasury and the mega government are very very beautiful pair so hii mambo inawezekana kuamsha kenya yetu na kuendelea mbele ni mambo inawezekana na sisi kama magovernor all we are saying please support our value chains support uchumi wetu industries zetu markets both local and international i think the women came out very well the, the youth of this country We, we, they, they, have, they have given the agenda and we support them the issue of equity the lack of equity in the block and the distribution of resources unakuta mca aloiro 500 people as a county has less than 200,000 people so an mca has more than a county but he only gets you know almost equal to what an mca gets but that county gets much more just like nyandawa county one mc has more people than i think those inequalities in the in the in vitu ambazo tume tumeongea na prime minister just touching them as i as i as i, as I finish up um, the issue of distribution of power and resources uh, the appointments in the block is something that we have already shared with with the prime minister yesterday when we when he discussed with uh, with him yesterday and then the issue last the issue of his entry his entry into mount kenya is something that we would like to and that's why we are called in this meeting can we also become partners with the with the prime minister as he enters the the block please let's let's work with him to to make sure that 
it becomes easier to uh, to work together so nataka kutoa shukrani kwa hayo the issue of security has been said very very clearly uh, i think the issue of life security uh, of life and property is something that i would like to also underpin that came out very 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 well kwa hivyo asante sana kwa kuweza kunisikiza na tikivi nataka kupatia magovernor ambao wako hapa nafasi pia waseme eh, kidogo eh, one by one tawalika in any order ni azu mimi na mheshimiwa siji kama pala nya labda utapatiwa nafasi eh, mali ngine i know is one of our governors yeah. nafikiri atapatiwa atapatiwa nafasi na na mheshimiwa prime minister mr murithi mimi i can start with you then followed by mheshimiwa nyoro and lastly bwana bwana eh, na governor wetu anakuru kinyanjui just one minute teach i love to maliza thank you thank you thank you Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Governor Kememia. Um, the Right Honourable Raila Odinga, the Second of the Republic of Kenya, my colleague governors, uh, our senior business leaders, MKF directors, uh, Senator Orengo, all distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I thought you just had lunch. Good afternoon. Eh, weka bidii kidogo. Um I have just about four points to make and I have two minutes. So let me be very quick about it. First point was already raised by the honorable Nyokabi about political violence and I think Mheshimiwa Mungai has repeated it. And it is true people are using political violence as a strategy for voter suppression. It is happening right now in Olmoran. We have lost 10 people in about three weeks. And we need, we need your assistance, ladies and gentlemen, we do. I mean, government has sent police and so on, and we are trying to cope with it. We are building new police stations, but we need resources to build them. And the police officers themselves we require vehicles and other things. So I hope MKF, as you look into the things that are to be done, it is true that that is happening right now in Ormoran. It has been used before. I think in the election of 1997, nearly 60 people were massacred one day in a, in a similar strategy. And we must overcome this. So I suggest myself, I, I may not quite want to go in the direction of the Honorable uh, Jenga Mungai. They are bandits, both political and criminal bandits, who are terrorizing a co community. In this particular instance, Kisis and Kikuyus who live there are being targeted. But I would not want us to profile all the whole, a whole community and say, I would rather we say the truth. There are some political bandits who are using young men. But I leave it there because it is not really the subject of today. But we need assistance. And I want to thank Governor Lee, uh, Governor Nyoro, uh, Governor Kimemia, because they were first, they were the first responders in supporting uh, my effort and the effort of the national government to bring this situation under control. My second point, um, you know, uh, those of you who enjoy mountain climbing, um, you know, like the late uh, Kenneth Matiba did, and he was a very good friend of the Right Honourable Prime Minister, you know that uh, the base of mountain climbing is Nanyuki and Narumoro. So perhaps in a very retro manner, uh, the Prime Minister then started the journey to climb Mount Kenya um, from Nanyuki and from Narumoro. But it was not the only thing that he came to do. We, we, the four governors and a number of other business leaders, met with the Prime Minister to take a dive into what is our economy. This question was put to me by Ed Joroge and uh, M.G. Wawero about a year and a half ago. What is this economy? And so we went to look at the numbers and found out that it is a two 0.7 trillion economy between here, Kiambu and Meru, between Tarakanithi and Nakuru. 
2.7 trillion shillings. In dollar terms, it is $27 billion. What surprised Eddie is that it is a bigger economy than Mauritius. Because Mauritius, as a country in Africa, is taken as, you know, the crown jewel of what economies should be. What surprised Eddie and MG Waweru was that it is a bigger economy than Botswana. It's a bigger economy than Rwanda. Just those 10 counties. And so some months ago when we made this presentation back to the business leaders, they then asked us, who is in that economy? <clears throat> who is responsible for this uchumi? So we went to look and we found nearly 3 million business people, micro and small businesses, many of whom spoke here. 3 million micro and small businesses power that economy that is the fourth largest economy in East Africa that is bigger than 34 different African countries bigger than 34 different African countries so the Prime Minister himself asked us a question therefore what must be done and one of the reasons he came to Nanyuki was to take a look at some work we've been doing there in support of micro businesses like what and Solomon spoke to it I think it was Solomon he asked for a 25 billion shilling stimulus package the Prime Minister wanted to see because in Laikipia we have a 3 billion stimulus package for just Laikipia Pekeake so if we are going to scale it up to national, Solomon, actually it's about 150 billion shillings in stimulus to micro and small businesses, that is what we need to do. I think... Uh who make a tuk-tuk in Nyaururu. He whipped out his checkbook and paid 450,000 shillings and became the first customer of the BJ50 tuk-tuk. Put your hands together for Dr. Masharia. We are about to deliver it to him. We are waiting for him to tell us the appointment. entry meaning the system has been built with the belief that all motor vehicles are going to be imported and these are the things that we want to change so that these micros can thrive so the Prime Minister wanted to see okay if you let me see what you're doing so he had a few SMEs come around and show him some of the things that they are making and he in fact bought one of the machines uh, not the tuk-tuk, he bought a machine to mill and make uh, feeds uh, and so on for livestock. We hope he's also going to buy a BJ50. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, one minute from closing. <laughs> uh, just one minute from closing. And, and I want to then talk to the point that Dr. Masharia said that we work. Who are we as Mount Kenya? We work and we value our work. And I want to explain it like this. I want to explain it like this. You know, and, and you can help me answer, uh, Uncle George. Mukami ekagatea. The name Mukami. Ekagatea. Nego kama kama ga. Gideji ekagatea. E mushiri ekagatea. E mure iri ekagatea. Yes. Our names, we are proud of ourselves for working. We call ourselves the, one, the trades that we are in. I want to explain my last point, which I'm sure uh, Uncle George and, uh, and uh, uh, Chairman Munga know. The name Kibaki is a trade. My grandfather's name is Getu. The reason he was called Kibaki is because he was the biggest tobacco merchant <laughs> in that side of the Abadea. That is why he was called Kibaki. We value the work that we do and therefore our conversation with the prime minister 
is about scaling up that support as Solomon was asking to small businesses. Our conversation amongst ourselves is removing barriers so that small businesses have access. Like the tuk-tuk in Yahururu should be able to be sold in Nakuru and Meru and Tharakanivi without additional taxation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mweshinua Raila said Kebake Tosha. So I ask you, Mount Kenya, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Governor, uh, Governor, yes. uh, let, me, let me just indulge on the governors. As I said earlier, the Right Honorable will have time with the governors of this region, courtesy of Mount Kenya Foundation. So please, bearing, let's bear in mind that time is really ran, and we have yet to listen to our main you know, guest, chief guest. So please, you know, bear with me, the governors, you know, be as short as possible, brief as possible. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the Right Honourable uh, Prime Minister, um, the guests, all protocols observed. I think I'll probably talk half of the time that Muridi has talked. I'm not so sure what else you can say after what Muridi has elucidated. But let me start by recognizing my, my Deputy Governor who is here. Uh, Joyce, and I know there are other deputy governors, maybe you can start so that I'm not discriminated, that I understood my deputy governor, that we have the three deputy governors there. Thank you, thank you very much, and God bless. Mine is going to be very short, and I'll start it this way. I'm very happy to have been part of the team that did the trafiant entry into Nairobi. It's ironical because we thought we would do trafiant entry into Mount Kenya. But we started with Mount Kenya and we ended up doing a trafiant entry with Baba in Nairobi. And if there was anybody who could doubt that Jesus made trafiant entry in Nazareth, then see what happened yesterday. So I'm really, really, really happy and pleased that we made that trafiant entry. Uh, secondly, I would want to say that uh, a, lot, a lot has been said, but I would just would want to use the computer language, just to make it simple. What His Excellency the President has done, which was a follow-up of the implementation of Vision 2030, which I happen to have been involved in its formulation, it's largely to create the hardware. And we have had this discussion. This country now is at a point, you cannot have adequate hardware, but we are at a point where we are having sufficient hardware. What we are looking for is the software. And the software is the stimulus package that gets the young people into doing the jobs. The, the software is that which makes the farmer in Gatundu North, a place called Kamwangi, produce milk and within 10 minutes, that milk is processed and sold in Dika because the road is good. It is the software. And Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Ray Rondiga, yours will largely be software. Because that's what this country needs in, in order to, to, to start an economic transformation. And we can talk more about that. What we also would want to uh, say is that the biggest gift that you and your colleagues did or gave to this country was the Constitution 2010. And with that came devolution. And we can see every corner of this country has changed because of that second liberation, the, the Constitution. What we are asking for is defending devolution. We would want devolution defended. 
and if not just not just de deferring devolution, but making sure that you have more confidence in devolution. Get more money to the counties. Let counties have the problem of accountability, but get more money to the counties. Let the national government work closely with the county governments, because that's the way that person, doesn't matter whether it's Mount Kenya or wherever else, they will be able to feed the government. I'll just talk about one issue, which again, as you can see, I just talked about the hardware and talked about the software and how easily we can fit into the software. But I would also want to say, Your Excellency, that we need to rethink, and I know there has been a bit of uh, discussions about the economic models, but instead of going to economic models, we agreed yesterday that we are going to do go direct to Anjiko and do things, projects. But I also want to challenge economists in this country because they are there. When misconceptions are about being made about economic development, where are you? Those of us who have read books like uh, Michael Tondaro and uh, Lipsey and the others, we all know the difference between different economic models. I want to simplify our development economic model by saying we need to strike the growth of our GDP. What is the contributor of our GDP? When we say our GDP is growing by 5 or 6 percent, what is contributing to the 5 or 6 percent? For as long as agriculture and manufacturing are not contributing to that GDP, there is not going to be jobs. There is not going to be sufficient food. There is not going to be cheap food that enables our manufacturing sector to become competitive. Yes, service industry is good. Finances are good. Yes, the banking is good and it will contribute to our 5%. But as long as manufacturing and agriculture are not doing well, we still have these people going unemployed and having the kind of problems we are having. Your Excellency, the thing is we have to unpack our GDP and we are not alone. It is an African-wide problem. We have to unpack our GDP. Pump more money into agriculture. Pump more money into manufacturing. Make sure that we, are, we have inherent natural competitiveness. Those are things that we have not talked about. And I would want the economies of this country to come up. We talk about these things. I don't know why we have only two or three economies start to talking and the rest are quiet. I think we also have to think very seriously about whether we are going to lead an export or an import trade economy. Sorry to say, Your Excellency, today this country is spending percent imported, wheat 80 percent imported, rice 75 percent imported, sugar 60 percent. What are we talking about? We are exporting wealth and importing poverty. Let's look at our agricultural sector. We've lost the competitive advantage of our tea, coffee, and other uh, uh, exports. We have to lead an export trade economy, one that makes sure that we conserve our money within here. So, Baba, we are ready. The Trafire and Entry study, followed by today, we want a bigger thing tomorrow. This train has left the station. God bless you. Asante. Asante sana, uh, Governor Kinyanju. I'm Olo Dinga. My fellow governors of Paranya, Derito, Nyoro, and Kimemia, our business leaders who are here, and all leaders here present, good evening. I want to take this opportunity to be brief, but maybe before I say the two issues I wanted to mention, allow me to recognize our deputy governors who have not been uh, recognized, and I'm duly they have been recognized. Okay. I had been told by the, the, the organizers. Thank you. So quickly, I want just to go to two issues. One, 
I want to congratulate uh, the former Prime Minister for launching the Azimio La Umoja Clarion. And I say this because if there's anything that our country needs today is the unity. I personally come from a place where I am voted in by every person from this republic. And therefore, when there is peace, and not just peace between one community and the other, peace between all of us and among us, then we all succeed. And um, therefore, to that extent, I want to congratulate him and to say the way moving forward, all these models we are talking about, all these great things we are talking about, will not mean much if we don't unite the country. And I therefore want to join you. You were in Rift Valley, you went to coast, you went to western, you went to the mountain. And uh, with respect to the mountain, I also want to confirm that uh, this, this time around when you went to the mountain, you were successful. But uh, when I was trying to look at uh, mountain climbing, we were also told that you have to acclimatize. You go to the base, acclimatize, then climb. So your three days stay at the Nanyuki place made all the difference. And um, we want to confirm that in the coming days, indeed, we shall be going. And uh, with respect to the Azimio la, uh, la, la Umoja, allow me also to say that uh, to join Governor Nderitu, who, like myself, comes from a cosmopolitan uh, county, and to confirm that we have been victims of ethnic profiling. And the worst thing that would happen is also to be also part of what targets others. So we may have a problem with an individual, but never with a community. And I think this Azimio La Umoja is for all Kenyans. And that must be very clear. Even if we differ with a person or with a group of people, it is not for the whole community. So let us work together. And I also want to tell the Mount Kenya community that among all the 43 communities, the community that is in every part of this country is the Mount Kenya community. From Lamu to Turkana to Kisumu and all that. And therefore, the biggest investors in diplomacy, in ensuring that we live at peace with everyone, must be this community. And I want to say, if you look at it in the global arena, the countries like the United States have the highest number of embassies across the whole world because they equally have their people all over the world. So likewise, even for ourselves, we want to live at peace in Tanzania, we want to live at peace in Lamu and all the other places. And I personally say the unity message and clarion must be our message moving forward. Allow me also to say that uh, uh, for a region such as ours, with deep interests in business, in agriculture, and everything. We would definitely want to go to this election, not with the option of winning, but winning must be a must. So, we cannot participate in this election hoping to win. In the last 20 years, we have mastered the art of winning. Our core business, even in this election, will be to win this election. Yeah? So therefore, even as we listen to all the other people, we don't just want to participate in an election and come and complain thereafter. We want to win, and when we win, we have a stable government for another five or ten years. So the stability before, during, and even after the election is very key. And uh, for me, when I look at all those things, I think my position has already been made. <laughs> then um, allow me also to say something about our country, that our country is not just another African country. We are a very important nation within the region. And uh, as probably has been said, this election is such that the final decision will be made from the mountain. So as we make this decision, we are not just making it for Kenya, we are making it for a very big region. I want to invite you to look at uh, to the west, I think to the east, we have Somalia, we have Ethiopia currently with challenges, we have southern Sudan, we have many other countries that depend on Kenya. And therefore, 
the decision you are heading to is not one that can be made casually by the roadsides just because we have given a few young boys alcohol and those sort of things. It is a decision that will inform the interest of this country for another 10 years. Do we want to remain as the champions or the hegemony for the region, or do we want to be relegated to the backyard? So I want to say that um, uh, we have very, very important decision to make. And uh, this decision is not just for ourselves, but for a bigger region that also relies on us for business. We are now in DRC, we are in many other of our African countries, so let us not take these decisions casually. Then uh, lastly, our decisions, although we are a region, must be based on what is best for Kenya. Because there will be no SME policy for one region. There will be no anti-corruption policy for one region. So what is best for Mount Kenya must also be good for Kenya. And therefore I want to say, for me as I make my decision, I'll be very um, careful to see who will best fight corruption. Because I have studied all nations in the world, and there is no nation that ever prospered with corruption. Where there is corruption, <laughs> poverty is a natural consequence. You as an individual may succeed, you as an individual may get rich, but as a country you get poorer. So do we want to be rich people in a poor country, or do we want to be in a rich nation where all of us can be able to survive? Kenya has that opportunity, but that will all be based on the decisions that we make in the few uh, coming days. Lastly, I also want to confirm that uh, the diaspora community from, from uh, the Mount Kenya region is very broad. And one of the areas where our disharmony in the last elections has brought chaos is in Nairobi. If the two of us come together, we shall solve Nairobi. We shall solve the Nairobi leadership crisis. And you can imagine the, the, the shame of your capital city really even being taken over by the national government because we could not be able to manage. But I want to assure you, when we come together, when we work together, we can take over the capital. Once you take over the capital, then that is where we have invested, and that is what all those things uh, are going to happen. Lastly, allow me just to confirm that uh, for us leaders, including myself, it is true that depending on our age, we have different priorities. A leader in their 30s, a leader in their 40s, a leader in their 60s. But it is also true, the older you become, the more you are focused on a legacy. Because you are not prepared to prepare a kingdom for another hundred years. Your focus is to leave your grandchildren and your nation in safe hands. May God bless you. I think Governor, he covered it very well. The issue of the unity of Mount Kenya region is something that we would like to assure the Prime Minister that we are agreeable. We shall make sure that the mountain is together, the east and the west, and we are working as governors uh, to make sure that this happens. I know the governors from the other region, the eastern side met with you. Then we are also meeting from the other side of Mount Kenya. That is something that I would like to assure this meeting, that we are working day and night to make sure that the mountain is not divided the way some people want to divide us and then be able to control us and to rule us the way they, the way, the way they want. I think the, the other issue that the governors and asked me to also mention uh, is the whole question of uh, you know, completing. Honorable Prime Minister, we should thank the President of this country that is able to even allow succession debate to start you know, when he's still in office. You know the African countries where you cannot even dream. You cannot even dream that a president is exiting. <laughs> even when he's exiting, he still wants to behave as if. But we want to appreciate our president, to begin a coffee, to begin my coffee that he's allowing his own succession to be discussed in broad daylight one year. One year to possibly the end of his term. And we want to appreciate him. Uh, as governors of the region, uh, Mashimu Alaida Odinga, please secure his legacy, secure his uh, life and property, secure his family, secure you know, his interests. I think this is something that you cannot pretend about in Africa. And I can assure you when, when we took over with the Mzee Kebak, we secured all the interests of the former president, Moy, and I know 
President Uhuru has done the same, and I know, Prime Minister, this is not a big job. It's not a challenge. It's something that you can be able to do. I know some things are difficult to say, but for those of us who have managed succession issues, it's very, very important that we assure that our President will be safe now and also when he exits the office and goes to do other things in the, in the world. So with those few remarks, I would like to to begin my governor Makofi, Manila Mazuri Ambao Mesema. Sorry, Deputy Governors, we are not able to say anything, but because the governors have talked, I think we you can assume that we, we carried your interests. I want to invite Governor Paranya and Mweshimua uh, um, uh, uh, Oburu, uh, Dr. Oburu, Atayeni Baba Pia, Waji Hapa Mbele, now Watafanya Kazi Frani, Alafu. Nitaarika Mheshimiwa His Excellency Prime Minister atusalimia Santini Santini apige makofi ya kuja Governor Paranya you can take over uh, 